Welcome to Buckaroo TV, your resource for B2B marketing for manufacturing and related industries. You create unrivaled products and services. We tell your story. Now on to the show. Welcome to Buckaroo TV. My name is Deb Daly and I'm the co-founder of Buckaroo Marketing New Media. Today we have two guests joining us, Tom Slagle and Dave Sheffield. They are the principals of Basie Commercial Facility Solutions. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Hi, thank you. So why don't we start off and um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? Tom, we can start with you. All right. Well, thanks for having us here today, Deb. We, we enjoy uh, spending time with you and give you a little bit of a background on my, myself. Was uh, I attended school back in the 80s and uh, got a degree in heating and air conditioning industry and got immediately into the field and started a family and worked day and night and ended up after eight years in the industry here at Basie beginning in 1994. Okay. Been here for 26 years. Started off as a service technician, um, became a field supervisor, progressed into a service manager, then general manager, and then somehow we are now ending up in the owner's seat as president of the company alongside my partner, Dave Sheffield. Okay. Dave, what about you? Uh, I've been with Basie 16 years and um, I'm the chief financial officer here and have had a career in the construction industry and distribution industry as both uh, controller and CFO along the way. So you, you worked a, a long time together, obviously. We have, yes, yeah, 16 years. Long time. Long time. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about Basie? Well, Basie was founded in 1977. Uh, the founder was Bill Basie, and he began the company on his kitchen table and uh, started out taking, taking off prints, off of blueprints, and designing ductwork systems and heating and air conditioning systems and sold them to general contractors. And since that time, we have grown and transitioned from a uh, contractor that installs heating and air conditioning for for the general contracting world to a service organization where our predominant uh, line is providing HVA service and plumbing service uh, throughout central Indiana. Okay. Now, was that Bill's original intent? I mean, you know, what did he, did he, did he think long-term that he was gonna move into the servicing aspect or just that's where he started and it kind of naturally morphed that way? Yeah, it kind of naturally morphed that way as, as, as the company grew and they were installing more and more uh, HVA systems throughout central Indiana, the end users for those buildings uh, were in need of service and needed repair and maintenance on the, the equipment that Basie had installed. So it kind of was a natural progression that the service department was started in the early 80s and um, then has grown since then. And then in the early 2000s, we transitioned out of uh, the uh, general contracting uh, bid speculation market and into strictly, strictly service. Okay. Um, Tom, is, does Vasey have multiple locations? We work out of a central location here in uh, Zionsville, just north of Indianapolis, but we do travel um, pretty much in a hundred mile radius. Mm -hmm. So we're as far as South as Seymour, Bloomington, and we travel state to state as far as Ohio, Illinois, and north into Lafayette, Fort Wayne occasionally. So we're a central Indiana based company, but we have 65 technicians in the field that are located throughout Indiana some of them are located north, south, east, and west. So our reach goes far, and it's it's not hard to take care of our customers through the central Indiana region with the with the base of technicians that we have. Okay, you mentioned you have sixty five techs. How many employees do you guys have total? Dave, how many techs do we or total employees we total employee count is eighty nine employees currently. Okay, uh, sixty five nice. people in the field, and then uh, a sales force of approximately 12 people, and then another um, eight, 10 people in, in the office. Okay, all right. 
why don't you um, give us some examples of shared or unique challenges uh, your customers will typically face? Because I know that you deal strictly with commercial clients and some of whom are manufacturers. Well, I think probably basic success is due to the fact that we are able to help our customers create budgets. Budgets seem to be uh, the biggest issue for a lot of our customers. They don't know necessarily what to budget, how much money to budget, and what to expect for repairs on top of maintenance. And so what our, our focus is, is on preventive maintenance budgets along with including repair budgets. Okay. Uh, we can provide numbers for preventive maintenance only, and we can fix and repair or replace on a time material basis. But we also are very successful at providing full service maintenance and repair and replacement budgets as well. So we can provide our customer with a single number for them on a yearly basis and they have no surprises. They know what they need to budget to not only maintain their equipment, which has to be done, but to repair it and or replace it when needed. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about how your preventative maintenance program works. Well, we have different levels of preventive maintenance, and um, but it's very proactive. We are computer-based and have lots of experience with all the different manufacturers and types of equipment that are available and that our customers have. Um, but we're very proactive because we believe a relationship is built on maintaining their equipment and not necessarily always repairing their equipment. So what we discuss with our customers up front is the importance of a preventative maintenance that will slow down, prevent, um, and give, as far as repairs are concerned, and give their equipment longer lasting life cycles and a longer lasting efficient life cycle. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't understand how important it is to maintain the equipment properly to prevent um, premature re repairs or failures. And it also makes their equipment run efficiently. Okay. and. Um... I assume by running efficiently, that translate to obviously your environmental comfort, but I'm assuming, you know, electrical energy savings and things like that. Correct. Cost of energies and comfort levels. If you, if you perform proper maintenance, you have less downtime according to what segment of the industry you're in. Could be downtime could, could equal less manufacturing possibility or could equal discomfort to your employees, which makes them inefficient because they are unhappy either being hot or cold. Yeah. So uh, it's, you get the efficiency in two ways, yes, whether it's the cost of your um, utilities or the cost of lack of production. Okay. Um, tell me something that, you know, when you work with your customers, tell me something that you find that every single one absolutely needs to know, and they may not know. Um, you know, too many, oftentimes as owners, we don't always know what we don't know. And so, it, is there anything um, in that realm that you could share with us as far as, you know, typically people don't know X, and this is why it's important? Well, that's a pretty broad question in my mind, but. Typically, they just don't know what's going on on their roofs. There's not a lot of companies just don't know what they don't see. So, if we can during uh, the initial process of of selling to a new client or a new person in the position of management at one of our our current clients, we'd like to get them to the roof, show them what's on the roof, what we do, and why we do it. A lot of times, when we are dealing with a new customer. We will take pictures and show them what's on the roof, but if you can get them to the roof to see why we do what we do and why we preach what we preach and are consistent at, it helps them understand um, how their building works and how their equipment works, but why it's so important to have a proactive maintenance on that equipment. Uh, seeing is believing, I guess is what I'm saying, and a lot of them just don't see it until it's an issue. Well, I, you know, sometimes you hear horror stories of different situations, but um, do you, I guess as a business owner, and I don't obviously know anything about my HVAC, 
but how do I know who I've hired is actually doing what you know, they're saying that they do. Because sometimes I'm sure you've encountered, uh, encountered customers that are saying, oh, yeah, we're great, no problem, and we don't need any help. And then you probably go in and you go, uh-oh, <laughs> they need lots of help. Yes, for sure. And that's a situation, like Tom said, again, where we would bring the customer to the roof to see the, the shape that the equipment is in or, and or, you know, take pictures if, if you know, they're not comfortable going onto the roof because in a large manufacturing setting, the roof can be the length of a football field and there can be 60, 70, 80, 100 pieces of equipment on the roof. And if they have not been properly maintained, uh, the efficiency is dropped dramatically. That raises your energy cost and you're prone to more failure. And so again, with our preventive maintenance programs, we really strive to do proactive maintenance and be out in front of the curve of breakdowns. And so equipment can operate year round and can operate efficiently. And one of the things that's unique about BASI is, for example, in the beginning of the summer, when temperatures really rise and you get that first day of 90 degrees or 95 degrees, um, in the historical kind of old model of the heating and air conditioning, the phone would ring off the hook because everybody's calling in saying, I'm hot, you know, my air conditioning isn't working, or it's, it's, it's hot in the break room. But with a proactive approach, we've already been out to the facility uh, before temperatures have gone to the 90s. We've cleaned everything we've gone through, we've tested and inspected. And so when we get those really hot days, our phones are relatively quiet. It's very different from the kind of the old model where it was a little bit more of a, a fireman approach where you know it went really hot, Tons of phone calls, everybody's busy, everybody's going, going crazy, or if it got screaming cold, likewise, everyone's running out for no heats. But, but with a proactive approach, you kind of, you take out those, those uh, ups and downs and you have a much more uh, even flow. Okay, now um, I'm assuming, you know, one of the other challenges is if, if a piece of equipment does break, especially on the rooftop, it's not like you just have one sitting out back that you can just say, oh yeah, let, let, we can just, you know, go put that on your, you know, right now, um, as far as lead times. That is correct. In these days and times, there's not very many companies or manufacturers that have a lot of inventory sitting around, period. So a lot of equipment is special ordered um, up on, you know, when it's needed. Just so need. that's, again, it's, it's really important to be out on site, ahead of the curve, like Dave said. So if there is a failure and uh, you need to talk to the customer or whether or not they want to repair and or replace, you have some time to make that happen before they are in to the heat of the battle or the cold of the battle for any season you're in. Um, and that's, so it's our job to get out there on a scheduled basis, okay. pre-season, to make sure that everything's gonna work and let them know how their equipment is operating and if it's operating properly. That gives us the ability to make sure we take care of our customer in, in the best fashion as possible. Right. I know in the past uh, we've talked and um, one of the things that makes you unique is your relationship with your techs. Um, talk to me a little bit about how that works. Well, we, again, like Dave was alluding to earlier, we, we operate a little differently than most companies. We don't hire and fire seasonally um, due to, our type of business having contract customers and scheduled maintenance. It allows us to have an even wavelength of business throughout the year. So our technicians are busy year round. And when it's slow, as far as the heating and air conditioning season is considered slow, when it's off, off peak, we are, per, we are performing maintenance and repairs and getting all the equipment to speed. And then when it gets really, really hot or really, really cold, our technicians are free to run service if needed or continue running maintenance. So our response time is excellent when it's really hot out and it's excellent when it's really cool out because we're not tied down on running emergency uh, repairs because we've already taken care of those situations for the most part with all of our customers. Mm -hmm. It helps us pick up new customers because a lot of times we'll get phone calls from someone that we don't do business with or have a contract with and they ask us if we can get to their facility on a service call for them you know, that day and a lot of times we can because our guys aren't 
tied down running emergency service all the time. So it gives us the ability to talk to new people and pick up some new customers because of our philosophy and what we do as far as a company. Our technicians love it because they get 40 hours year round. Average on, you know, on average, they work 42 to 45 hours a week. And that's year round. Um, technicians don't have to work 60 hours when it gets really hot out. They don't have to work 60 hours and it's really cold out because we have an even wavelength of business and they don't get laid off or sent home in those off, off peak seasons. Right. So it's really consistent. So because of that, our, ten, our average tenure is really high for technicians. You know, we discussed earlier, I've been here for 26 years and we have five technicians that have been here longer than I've been with the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've, you know, they're here long term. That's because Vasey is a very well organized place to work. And Bill Vasey set up a culture that is very friendly to his employees and to the people. That's why I'm still here because of Bill Vasey. That's what he set up. So we've carried on that tradition and that culture, trying to make it as friendly and opportunity for success for them as much as possible. And so we, our technicians typically stay with us like our customers long term. It is a relationship. You know, our, our technicians are our bridge to our customers too, and we know that. So we make sure that our customers and our technicians have good communications and have the ability to discuss issue. And our customers typically will see the assigned technician on a regular basis. So they create relationships. They're not just seeing every technician we have in the company coming out, you know, helter skelter. It is designed for us to have primary technicians on facilities to create those relationships. And they, they understand the buildings and they understand the customers. It just makes for a long-term strong relationship, which is what we want. We want long-term relationships. Sure. I know one of the things that I was really impressed with, um, you know, with the whole COVID-19, um, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs or were or on furloughs and everything. And I know it really impressed me by the fact that you didn't do that with your team. Um, you know, everybody stayed busy and, and what types of other things did they do since they couldn't go into the manufacturing facilities? Uh, what are the types of things did you help them stay busy with? Well, they did, they did a lot of different things. Um, we were uh, fortunate enough to get the uh, PPP loan, payroll protection plan loan. And so that enabled us to keep all of our staff uh, working full time. Um, office staff and sales worked remotely from, from home. And we had our, our technicians, we did, did some work around the building, that um, around the exterior and interior, some of the things have been kind of put off and uh, we got some things cleaned up. Um, got some vans <laughs> moved out. So you get a little creative when you're trying to keep, again, 65 guys busy. But for a, a lot of our guys, there was still work to be done. You know, a facility, even if it's not producing uh, something, there are still, you still have to have air conditioning. You still have to have some functionality of the equipment. And so um, we were still able to, to run calls and still receive some service calls, uh, even though things were shut down because, um, Again, things just can't come to a complete stop. Right. Just because the building's vacant doesn't mean, you know, everything stops. And right. I, uh, I know uh, another thing, you know, about you is the fact as far as training is really, really important to you guys. It did allow us to um, apply more training, get caught up on training. Um, we do an online training now as far as safety training is concerned. We are very uh, concerned about safety for our technicians. So we have a a system that is in in place right now where we have a lot of online training. So the technicians have the ability to take the time to do the training during the day as opposed to at night when they got home after work. So a lot of them are very appreciative of, of that. We also implemented training as far as technical training on equipment because there's so many different manufacturers out there and so many different philosophies of how systems function these days, training is just never ending. That allowed us to have the opportunity to get a lot more training pushed out to the technicians and, and get, uh, you know, get us make sure that we are staying up to speed on all the new technology. It's changing every day, but um, it did help us in that fact that we were able to monitor and see what, uh, what 
technicians have been to which classes, which ones have been to which training sessions, and, and help get them caught up. Um, so it was important. And it also allowed us to get ahead of the curve as far as getting guys trained with other technicians. We don't hire a lot of new technicians each year, but through this, we didn't fire any technicians or lay off any technicians. We have hired a couple of technicians. We've grown. We've taken this opportunity to find some qualified people, bring them on board and start showing them, you know, what we like to say, and here's the Vasey way. Show them how we operate, how we perform maintenance, how we treat our customers and what's expected. And most of the time, the new technicians, the new hires, it's a, it's a, uh, fresh breath of air for them to go, wow, you're not telling me just to hurry up and get it done and get out of here. You're telling us, do the right job, do what you need to do and take care of your customers. Mm -hmm. And they start to learn that philosophy because if you do a good job, you get called back. And the right. customer doesn't, you know, the customer is not saying, well, I'm going to try somebody else this year. They're content with your services. They like what you do. You discuss their issues with them. You keep the open minds of communications and create that relationship. The technicians then feel that it's a warmth. It's a, it's a good feeling though that your your customers want you to come back and appreciate what you're doing and are upset with you because you're there, you know, performing maintenance or whatever it is and costing them money. They appreciate that you're taking good care of them. But that is allowed because of our maintenance type of contracts. It's budgeted out, you know, according to what the customer wants. It can be a monthly uh, payment. It can be a quarterly payment. It can be a yearly payment according to how they want to do it. But they know it's it's budgeted and they don't mind seeing our people on site because they know that they're there to help them and be, you know, do proactive services. And that takes a lot of load off the technicians. They aren't getting barked at every day because they're on site. They're appreciated because they're on site. So it just creates a good, you know, a good relationship between the customers and a good relationship between the technicians mm -hmm. and management. And, and Deb, our, um, our technicians take a lot of pride in the work that they do. They're highly skilled and, one of the benefits of having a, a primary technician uh, attached to a facility is that technician then goes into this building, learns the ins and outs of the building, and then that kind of becomes you know, his building. And he takes pride that everything works correctly, that everybody's comfortable inside, and that pride and that you know, sense of ownership really uh, benefits the customer a great deal. And, and again, as Tom said, when, when our guys come in, they're kind of the hero, you know, because uh, they're the one that's going to give you air conditioning or give you heat if you're cold. And so, um, again, it's, a, it's the same face each time on most occasions. And so, yeah, so they really, they enjoy that ownership of, of having that, that agreement. They take pride in their agreement and, and, and how effective the, the systems run. So it really does work well, you know, particularly in a manufacturing environment when you've got a lot of different systems and uh, doing a lot of different things. And so it does work out really well. We had the opportunity once to go into a school. It was a, an Annapolis public school that had been sold to a private investor and he was putting businesses in the school. And he had called us, he wasn't our customer at this point, had called us to come give him a price to replace this boiler system. So we sent a project manager and a a service technician that is familiar with boilers and, and, and controls, sent them down there to take a look at this. And ultimately what happened was our service technician looked at the system with our project manager and said, we don't need to replace this boiler. We just need to repair it and adjust it and set it up properly. So we did talk to the customer and said, give us a chance to look at this and go through it. Cause we don't think you need to replace it. We think that it's functional if it gets set up properly. And so our technician spent, I don't know if it was two days, three days down there going through the system and, and told them what they needed to do. And they allowed us to perform the services and the system worked properly. So they didn't end up having to change their boiler. We didn't end up selling them a boiler, but we did get uh, the contract work at that facility after that. We now perform their maintenance and the minor repairs that we need to do. But that boiler is still operating today because we repaired and maintenance and, and we keep it adjusted. Right. So we could have gone and just sold them a boiler, but that's not our philosophy. Our philosophy is, you know, do what you need to do, not what you don't just sell parts, materials, equipment. Right. You sell the customer what they actually need and perform the services that are actually need. Because we know if you do that, you've got a customer for a long term. And right. that's what we really are about is the long term. 
Yeah. We pick and choose our customers typically because we want that relationship. If somebody's calling us just as a competitive bid, you know, we typically are not interested, but we will go out and talk to them, see what their needs are. And if we can do something for them, we will. But we're about relationships. We don't want to talk to you one time, do a job and leave because we really want that long-term relationship that we can count on and we can schedule and be prepared for. Sure. Um, you know, I know one of the things that we haven't touched on, uh, David, is your plumbing. Talk to me a little bit about your plumbing division, because that's not something you've always had. No, that's right. We added our plumbing division about six years ago, and uh, we have about uh, nine guys involved in plumbing. We do service plumbing. We do plumbing installation. As it can be anything from toilets to faucets to, uh, to drains. Um, outside uh, leading to sewer drains. Uh, we also have uh, a division that does uh, drain cleaning with uh, hydrojet and other types of jetters that can clean grease traps and, um, and other drains. It's been, uh, it's been a great uh, addition to our suite of services because it allows us uh, to offer our customers not only HVAC and control work, but now you can add plumbing in as well. And so it gives our customers the ability to have a single source to reach out to uh, for their facility. And um, it's uh, something that continues to grow and, and we're quite proud of it. We've got a great group of guys that are in that division. We do have a project division. Um, we have about nine people in the project division as far as HVAC is concerned and, and uh, piping. And then we also have the plumbing uh, division that has some project installers as well so even though we typically don't get involved with new construction we have the ability but we typically don't get involved with that because most of our personnel are technicians and trained and highly compensated and are in basic vehicles so we don't compete well in new construction typically Mm -hmm. but we do have a team that is highly skilled and capable of installing new equipment and replacement We do it all the time for our customers. We replace equipment and we've got gentlemen in that division have been with the company again, you know, 15 to 30 years, lots of experience and knowledge out there. So we have the ability to change out equipment, install new equipment. We do have our own sheet metal uh, division in the back. Mm -hmm. We can make roof curbs, we can make duct work, we can do a lot of things. Um, We have a plasma cutter for custom cut materials as far as whether it's ductwork or diamond plating. Um, We do a lot of custom work for our refrigeration division. We can make panels for walk-in coolers, freezers, coverings, door flashings, lots of things. So we've got a wide uh, ability to service our customers. Um, So I want to make sure that, you know, we're not only a good service company and maintenance company, but we do have the ability to put in new equipment and replace equipment. And we do it at a very highly skilled uh, rate. I'm proud, I'm always proud to walk into a a location and look at what we've done to say, yeah, that's Mm -hmm. Uh, If If we find an issue like that, we take care of any issues because not only do you do a good job, it looks good. We, that's another thing we're always preaching to our guys. Make sure you perform well and when you're done, clean up after yourself because if you leave anything hanging around, laying around, it doesn't look good. That's what the customer sees. And no matter how good the job you do, you're leaving a bad impression if you don't leave the job clean, tidy, neat, and straight. And so that's something that we are always pushing out to our guys. Make sure you not only do you do a good job, but clean up after yourselves and smile at the customer and say thank you when you leave because without them, we aren't here. Right, right. That makes perfect sense. Now, um, given the, you know, have you added any new products or services lately? besides the plumbing division as far as, you know, cause I know we've had the COVID and that's affected you guys as far as maybe the ability to go out and service some of your clients in the same way or, you know, doing a little bit different. Um, what, a, what kind of things do you have going on there? Well, we've seen a, a, a great deal of interest in air purification um, since basically the middle of March. Uh, the technology has been around for several years um, but it was a little bit more in the background, but then of course, due to the pandemic, it's really been pushed to the, to the forefront. 
And we have installed uh, ultraviolet light systems as well as uh, ionization systems into our existing clients' uh, properties as well as, as new customers to, uh, to provide uh, air throughout the, the duct system that is being purified either, either via ultraviolet light or by uh, an ionization process. And uh, we have also um, really tried to expand and notify our customers about touchless fixtures uh, in the plumbing world. You know, you've got touchless faucets, touchless hand dryers, touchless uh, soap dispensers. Um, and some, so those also are another option, again, in this, in this kind of new environment to, um, to have, again, less, less touch points in a restroom. And then with the uh, air purification, of course, to, to clean the air 24-7 uh, around the clock. You know, sure. in a facility. Sure. Well, and obviously that's, that's a, you know, we all want to stay safe and healthy. So that's super important. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add to today's conversation? Anything that I might've forgotten or? I've got one thing. I think Tom touched on it, but what I would like to uh, tell people about is our uh, project sales managers, our project sales reps truly are, uh, really, really brilliant when it comes to design of systems. Um, they have taken, taken on tasks or problems um, that vary everything from, um, you know, air, air exchanges in, in a manufacturing facility that has, you know, smoke that is produced from a production line, whether it's like welding, and, you know, we've, we've dealt with a company that had a lot of welding in a facility and they needed to exhaust uh, that that smoke and that welding material sufficiently what they had was not working again our team came in designed a system that could capture capture those fumes and that smoke and exhaust it to give the employees you know better and cleaner air we've done paint booths we've done clean rooms um they are they just between the, the group they are incredibly talented that um, they almost kind of like the challenge um, of Give us your problem uh, with with an air quality or or a temperature issue or or a humidity issue, and and, and the team you know will come together and put out a product that uh, that will that will solve the problem. And um, and I know Deb, you've worked with us to really try to bring that out. Like, tell me more. Those are those are great stories. And uh, you know, our guys do it on a on a monthly basis. It's kind of old hat to them, but but they really do some amazing things. And uh, we're very proud of what they can do. Yeah, we do have a push on right now to expand our plumbing division. Um, we're we are starting to, to install more and more piping, and that's everything from underground to you know water supply, air supply. Mm -hmm. uh, we purchased the latest and greatest equipment to install and service, um, whether it is drain and sewer or like I say, process pipe or domestic pipe. Um, so that is a big push. We have gentlemen that are certified in backflow training um, or inspection. So we have the ability to inspect backflow preventers, which every facility has in the commercial facility out there. They have a backflow preventer in their, in their building and uh, or multiple. So we have the ability not only to inspect them, but we also repair. A lot of companies don't repair, but they'll come out and inspect your backflow preventer and let you know that it's either failed or passed inspection but they may not have the ability to provide service. And we do provide service and repairs on backflow prevention as well. So we're, we put a push on trying to, to work with that. We initially worked within our customer base to, to grow that division, mm -hmm. to keep it under control, because we didn't want to really advertise anything to the masses that we couldn't produce. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we kept it under control and we have, and now we're in the growth. Now we're, you know, growing that division and it's it's a good division it's a good segment of the industry to be in and our customers love it when we go out and talk to our customer base and let them know that we have a plumbing division they're always telling us well we didn't know that and we said yeah well we've just started here recently but it is available now if you would like it and typically we get a service call right then and there yeah and um so and that's the goal we want to we want to do more business with our good customers and we want to provide them more services. Well, so, and it's easy to 
them because they already have the relationship. They don't have to go find someone else that they might be able to do the work and figure out if they can trust them or not. You know, it, it's a win-win situation for both. It is. It's worked out real well for us. So we're about growth, but we're really about controlled growth and controlled growth with, with the right customer. Um, one of the things you mentioned was the backflow and not all of our listeners, viewers will know what that is. So can you just briefly tell me what that is and why it's important? It's basically in place where the water system enters your facility from, um, from wherever supplying your water, whatever, whatever company that may be. It prevents water from the building re-entering the loop that may get to other customers' locations. So if you had some type of issue in your facility where something got into the water system, it doesn't allow it to backflow into the supply lines that are coming into your building. Okay. So it's a safety feature there that you have to have. And it is important because if there's any type of problem with your system, you don't want it entering the, the supply line for everyone. So it's, and then you have that in your facility. You have, you have a backflow preventer in place for your fire protection. You have it in for one in place for your domestic water, your production water. And if you have sprinkler system, there's also one there for your sprinkler system. Okay. They have to be inspected once a year uh, to pass for the state. And um, we do that, provide that service. And like I said, we also can repair and or replace or pipe in new. If they're going to expand, we have, we have the ability to do all the above. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, is there anything else that we haven't covered today that you'd like to mention? I know that we've covered a lot. You guys do amazing work. Well, thanks, Deb. Um, you know, with what we've talked about, it's kept us really busy as we as we've grown. Um, we've we've got other things in the works that we're not ready to talk about just yet because we want to make sure that we have everything in place to support it. But uh, you know, as, as, as Dave and I grow along here, we're we're careful and make sure that we do things properly, and then we can support what we tell you we're going to do, and we have the manpower and the right people in place to do that. Sure, it's, it's important to us. You got to walk before you can run. Yes, yes. And um, I also uh, heard that you guys are proud sponsors of the Indianapolis Colts. We are. We are indeed. We are indeed. Yes, we take care of their facility and uh, we hope to, uh, we hope we can be in the stands uh, <laughs> this season. Yeah. Uh, At su in subways here. Yeah. In to be seen, yes. Yes, we, yeah, we have a good partnership with them. We are proud sponsors of the Indianapolis Colts. Um, it is a good organization to work with. They are very particular about what services we provide and how we provide it. And that's right up our alley. So it's been a very good relationship. Terrific, terrific. Um, so if our viewers, listeners want to reach you guys, what's the best way to contact you or best way to contact Basie? Best way is uh, by our website. That's vasey.com. That's v a s e y.com. Or you can reach us by telephone at 317 873 2512. We'd be happy to talk to you and uh, take care of what you need. And I assume you both are on LinkedIn as far as if someone's interested in, in reaching you that way or if they need to talk to you directly and not a technician or what have you. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, let us know. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed today's show, please be sure to subscribe to our channel, Buckaroo TV. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb. Thanks for viewing Buckaroo TV. If you'd like to learn more about B2B marketing for manufacturing and related industries, please visit us at GoBuckaroo.com. 